So it's time for a new video and today we will do something about tool maintenance because carving all the time and uh, gun making it's not the whole uh, the complete job we need to do some maintenance on the tools as well for the carving gouges for the masses of files I have after some time they will all need some little maintenance so let's go so the first job is to check whether they are sharp or not in case they are not oh that's scary sharp in case they need some resharpening I use a slate whetstone that's oil a uh, thick slab of oil slate and then searching for the right angle ah. and I don't use water for uh, for grinding I mostly use simply oil So, my chip carving knife. Just a few rounds. For bigger hollow gouges, I have this uh, grindstone for the inner side. Then we do the outside as well. I 
Then the next step. One moment. These are only my old carving gouges. The new ones are already done. So carving gouges, uh, spoon carving knife, chip carving knife, the uh, sp uh, spoke shaves we will do later. And I checked all if they are pretty sharp or not. Most of them are already sharpened. And now we will take a look at the final polishing of the grind. For this job, I have two jigs that uh, simply the back side of a cab cabinet, or you can use uh, for making some kind of MDF plate. That's for a bigger jig that I will make. So uh, just drill a hole, cut out a round part and it's fix it with the screw and it's done. And then you need some polishing paste or like a block. And then we put it in the drill stand. And it's ready to go. The surface polished and you need some oil on a rug like this to clean off The excess material by this way you can put some oil on the metal as well metal parts because to protect it from corrosion and now It's perfect. This one will get the same treatment.
So check if it's sharp. And when it's perfect sharp, you can see that the cut is smooth and shiny. When it's rough, then the sharpness is not okay. The cut shall be shiny. So now all our uh, carving tools are sharpened. Then and uh, the metal part get right now some treatment some oil on the rock and then all metal parts will get some rust protective oil just a little not too much And you can see it's directly a little bit of cleaning. So you can see even if the carving gouge looks rather rusty or uh, colored from uh, from aging the bevel the cutting bevel is always polished that will make the chip, uh, carving chips run much more smooth if this is rough then as well your cutting will be rough.
So, all carving gouges right now are sharpened and the blades are with a layer of rust protection oil. Now you take a different rock. Don't matter what you will use. This is a rather cheap stuff. And I do the treatment for the wood. Ah. It's getting too stiff, so we use the new bottle. possible to suck it in oil as well and now some Danish oil for the handles So you see a big difference and later we will polish the whole thing. You can see the difference. The shiny one is with oil, the other one is not. And it's not just for a good look, it's for uh, the maintenance of the wood as well. So otherwise, yeah, it can call uh, and it can get cracks or shrink or whatever. So it's better to have some maintenance sometimes, so we do the rest.
that's the treatment of uh, the handles with oil so and if you have some roughnesses on the handles that are um, uncomfortable to use then after oiling it's possible to use a toilet brush simple cut off the handle and put it into the drill stand and then polishing the surface after oiling Let's do one more. too much pressure will give it a nice shine and a smooth surface that it's perfectly in hand. So now it's time to do some resharpening on our spoke shaves. So uh, it's rather difficult with this style because they don't have a uh, dismountable blade when I dismount the blade all the time then it's getting yeah I would say the stiffness of the fixation will be lost so I have to sharpen it in this stage but for that I put a double layer of 600 grit sandpaper then Put the spook shave in. So like this. I can do something about the inside and now we will regrind the outside. We will do it as well with a slate stone. So 
One more. With the sandpaper. Now it's done and we will check how it works. Nice. Perfect. So then we can make the next one. So now some words about storing. I use a leather tool wallet. It's uh, yeah, just thick, soft leather sewed together with some stripes. And to my opinion, that's for storing one of the best ways. If you just use it in your workshop, You can do a wall rack, like in the background, just some holes in a board where you put all your carving tools in. The necessary thing is that you don't have a bottom where the tools are standing on. Because when the tools are standing on a board like this and just grab at the top, then they get dull really fast. Just by the movement around, they're getting dull. So they need to be grabbed on top like this. So the blade is don't touches anything. So that's to my opinion, uh, but a uh, leather wallet like this is just the best way because that can protect the complete tool also from a bit of corrosion, from uh, a lot of moisture, stuff like that, especially when you don't have a workshop that is well heated or stuff like that, or where you have moisture in the air, that's the best way to store it. And when it's in a cabinet, uh, then, it's perfect like this. So now some words about maintenance on card scrapers. These are relatively thin. It's rather easy to bend it over for scraping bigger surfaces, but they are all relatively dull. And the easiest way is To put it into a wise, not a steel wise, you need soft surfaces, not damage it. And then you take a very fine file
do a few strokes. In case it's a straight one, we need a straight file and then do some straight strokes like this until you have created an edge and then you take an old drill the back side of an old drill and then rub the surface first straight and then with a slightly angle Pressure. Uh, maybe the edge is a little bit too big. just create an edge so and again it starts cutting And you can see just with this small edge. And it's really tiny it's possible to cut again That's all. Now
you can see it works again. For this one, it will work pretty much the same. This time we will use a little bit slightly different technique. We will use a fine grindstone and then Again, Like this, the cutting edge will be even more fine and even more dangerous. You see, you get nice scraping shaves. So it's pretty easy to resharpen. Uh, Blade like like this. <laughs> to my opinion, for uh, having a big cutting bevel, you can use the file for resharpening. Take some strokes with the file, then uh, burnishing the surface with the backside of a HSS drill, but for finer results, it's better to have a hard grindstone. that will create a much finer bevel.
And when you feel, you can feel a very thin edge. And again, trying if it worked. And you can see you have really nice shavings. The storing or first is the preventive, I would say preventive maintenance is just with some WD-40 on the surface. That's all because you're touching it with your hand all the time. For storing, I think it will be best, or it is best, to have a leather wallet where they are all separated in separate cases because uh, then the edges don't touch each, each other. I don't have it at the, at the moment. I just take a rock like this. Put it in, fold it over, then the next one. And so on. So all edges are protected. And like this, you can put it into, uh, yeah, I would say into a wallet, into a tool wallet or whatever, or in, uh, uh, drawer or cabinet so they don't slide upon each other and then you have nice and sharp draw blades or scrapers. So for maintenance of the files, there is not much to say about. You just need a file brush. You see, the teeth are like hooks. Special brush for cleaning files. And then put it on the ground like this. Just put it on the ground like this. And then filing with the direction of uh, brushing in the direction of the cut. And go slowly down the file. will take out all such material 
and at the end the stroke of the file and the fineness of the stroke will be much better. That works with fine files as well as rough. Here you can see, I used the file for wood, so The teeth are clean again. You can do this with your rasps as well, especially when you have remains of the wood in the in the in the teeth. This is the I would say the wrong made handle for the bollock dagger so now we have a bollock rasp <laughs> and it's working pretty much the same so all remains of the wood Now the teeth are clean again and it works really be much better. So, not perfect, but way better than before. So, and before I forget, never, really never take files, simple metal files, for filing tin or lead because the soft metal will get stuck into the teeth and it's really hard to get out so mostly the file is done after that if you want to file um, tin for inletting or pewter or lead or stuff like that Silver is way more hard, that's not a problem. But if you're filing, t uh, if you want to take off exit, excess lead or stuff like that, it's better to use a rasp 
for the first run and then later use uh, sandpaper for equalizing because the normal files will get damaged really fast. The lead or a pewter or tin will get stuck into the teeth and then the file is done. So first with a rasp and then with sandpaper. You can use a file only in case you have a milled file. These files are having a very different style of teeth. Here, this teeth, these teeth are milled on a machine and they are way more sharp and still here you have to take care that it's not on one point at all the time. I take this one once to use it on, um, on the lathe to equalize uh, uh, pewter casting on a handle and you can see the tin gets stuck into the teeth and it's like welded, you won't get it out. So, and the handle treatment is pretty much the same like on, um, like on a carving gouge, just some Danish oil or if the Danish oil is getting too sticky, you do one more layer with VD40 that takes off the stickiness and then you will like uh, will have fun with it for a long long time so that's all for today and i promise soon i will go on with um, some work on the swivel breech rifle because last time i simply don't find the time to get uh, to go on with the project but soon i hope i will have more time so that's all about tool maintenance goodbye until next time